We're going to go ahead and get started. This first um, presentation is more or less an overview of some of the things you might hear today from other, some of the other presenters, um, some of the programs we've got at the AICA, um, and some questions that have kind of been floating out there throughout the spring. So I just kind of wanted to start with a presentation that went over a handful of those things. So part of my job is to be able to go to events like this and speak to purebred commercial cattlemen and invariably, depending on their age, the people are going to walk up and say, you know, my daddy or my granddaddy used to have Charlays and it's more or less always followed up with the negative things that they remember about the Charlay cattle. Man, those were, were big calves or man, those were crazy. And, and you've got to understand that there was part of that, but Charlay breeders have done a very good job of fixing some of the issues over the past 30 years. So some of the traits that people think about Charlays are kind of hard to quantify, you know, calf bigger, docility. One trait that's pretty easy to quantify is, is any kind of performance. And so I wanted to show just a little bit of how the Charlay breeders have made their cattle better over the past basically three decades. So I wanted to be able to track some genetic progress. So I pulled, with the help of Mary Lou in the office, we pulled actual data from 1991 and 2017 for birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight. We figured an average between males and females, and I figured the difference over time to kind of track progression. So I went back to the old days. I went back to 1991. When I made this slide, I made it with a little bit of sarcasm, because I know that some people are going to say 1991 wasn't that long ago, and it really wasn't. But when you talk about genetic progression, better part of three decades really is is that long ago. So I once again, I, I broke down birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight between females and males for 1991, 88 and 92 pounds respectively, 579 and 634 for weaning weight, and an average yearling weight of 876 and 1124. For a little visual representation for people who might not remember those days, the leading sire for registrations was a bull named fh rr Sequoia 148. That was him. So if nothing else, we made him better look at So we fast forward to 2017, to the new and improved Charlay. Once again, the same traits, females and males respectively, 83 pounds, 87 pounds, weaning weights of 617, 683, yearling weights of 931 and 1207. The leading sire for registrations that year was LT Ledger 0332P. So you can see just in simple picture form that they've improved dramatically. So what does that mean over the best part, better part of 30 years? Charlotte breeders have been able to lower the birth weights of their cattle, males and females, all of the population, but able to lower their birth weights by five pounds while still increasing weaning weights, 38 pounds and 49 pounds respectively, and yearling weights, 55 pounds and 83 pounds. So while 30 years might not seem like that long ago, you guys have done a good job of lower birth weights and still keeping performance um, ahead. So the Charlotte Association, we're not a organization that's going to have a EPD or a trait for every single measurable characteristic. One thing that we are proud of is the TSI, the Terminal Sire Index, and it's something that a lot of you have seen, a lot of you have used, and some of you might not know exactly what goes into it and how it's derived. So TSI blends birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, ribeye area, hop carcass weight, marbling, fat, and economic factors, basically commodity prices, into one economically relevant index. So just a quick um, example of, of how it works is Sire A's index is 191.66 and Sire B's index is 200, then we would expect Sire B's offering to average $8.34 more net return than Sire A's. It's just a simple index. It's very important and we think that it fits the, the Charlay genetics as well as anything. And just a quick note that it's, it's used heavily in feedlot and carcass driven scenarios. It should not be the only tool for selecting replacement females. I, I wanted to mention that because sometimes within herds, people are guilty of looking at one number instead of all the numbers. TSI is a very good number. We use it quite often throughout bull sale season, but it shouldn't be the only tool as you're building your herd. So a handful of years ago, um, like a lot of breed, other breed associations, the Charlay Association jumped into the We jumped into the genomically enhanced EPD realm, and we go through Gene Seek, 
AIC, AIC uses the GGP BO 50K test through Gene C. So this test includes parentage. So this is a cost of 25 bucks a head with a $13 subsidy from the AICA. So we believe in it enough that we're going to write Gene Seek a $13,000 check every year for every sample that we get in. So genomically enhanced DPDs have been shown to add about a calf crop's worth of accuracy to any unproven parent. So if you're a purebred breeder out there that's wondering why you should use genomically enhanced DPDs, the reference point I like to use is if you've ever had a producer come up to you and, for example, talk about using Charlays on heifers, you can point to the physical attributes of the bull, his head size, his head shape, his muscle pattern, his bone structure. You can point to an actual birth weight, you know, say he's below 80 pounds. With genomically enhanced DPDs, it basically gives you another layer of selling point on those bulls. You can say, well, and we've had them genomically enhanced, so we've got a calf crop's worth of accuracy built into these, these, these bulls. So the DNA submitted will be included at each genetic evaluation. So currently we have six genetic evaluations, January, March, etc. So every other month, and those in-between months, we gather data. So every time the DNA comes in, it's factored into the next genetic evaluation. So this is just a graph that I wanted to show. I pulled it off of one of our documents that AGI put together. One of the common misnomers about genomically enhanced DPDs that I run into is it almost gives you the idea that you don't have to collect actual data. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So this is just a graph of what all goes into genomically enhanced DPD. If you're a purebred producer that is interested at all in using genomically enhanced DPDs, you need to collect as much data now as you did before. And it's actually more important with a single step method and with genomically enhanced DPDs as it was before. So that's just a visual representation of all the components that go into it. So one of the big questions I got all spring is why isn't the Charlotte Journal printing the trait leader list anymore? The quick and dirty answer about the trait leader list is it's time consuming and it's fairly antiquated. So like anything in modern time, something that's going from prints and now going to digital. So a handful of years ago, the AICA came out with the Sire Selector tool. So without going through all of these traits, basically you can create your own multi-trait leader list. So if you go to the AICA, go to this page, you're able to input any field, or as many or as few as you want. You can select age, herd book, horn status, everything. So the entire population of the AICA is at your fingertips based on what you're looking for specifically to in, her, in your herd. So we're always looking for ways to try to make Charlay sire, Charlay cattle, Charlay sire cattle, bring them. If you visit with people within the industry, you're going to realize that a commodity calf of any breed status really can't bring any more than you bring right now at your local auction market. But if you go to any kind of video sale or any kind of sale that they sell program cattle and you're going to hear Jason talk about program cattle and that's agent source verification in HTC, GAP, natural type of cattle. We realize that that's one market that we can get an extra premium over commodity prices. So this this is a slide that is exactly what it says it is. This is program premiums, and this is the premium averages on program cattle through Superior Livestock Auction in 2018. So I wanted to show this slide first. And this was all the program cattle, so agent sourced, non-hormone treated, natural, GAP certification. These are the premiums that they brought broke down between steers and heifers. So this is, this is not Charlotte specific. This is all breeds in here, but these are cattle that were qualified in the programs, and these are the premiums they derive. So you can see over commodity price, per hundred weight, these cattle brought a premium, especially for the input cost. So that being said, earlier this year, we worked on the Charlet Advantage program. This is a program that was around several years ago when trade was a buzzword and we were talking about exporting all this beef. It came back with all the <coughs> trade talks, but really, honestly, we brought the program back because of domestic talk, because of buzzwords like traceability and 
and sustainability. So we wanted to be able to bring the program back for just as much domestic production as we did any sort of export <coughs> market. So the Charlotte Advantage program is an agent source verification program specific to Charlotte influenced cattle. It allows feeder cattle to gain premiums by agent source verification or qualifying your cattle for natural NHTC or GAP programs. GAP, if you're unfamiliar with that, that is a qualifier to get cattle to get beef into Whole Foods. So the cost is $4 per tag with no enrollment fee, but if you're going to do the NHTC natural or GAP certification, there is an on-site cost through IMI Global. So just to break it down a little bit, this is a certificate that you're going to get as a producer from the AICA and the National Center for Beef Excellence who's going to help us with this project. So as you're going to go through it, you're, if you're going to go through the regular verification process or the Charlotte Advantage program, there's basics you're going to have to fill out. So you're going to get a phone call and you're going to do a desk audit. We're going to gather ranch information, any sort of, of claims, if you're, what program you're going to be in. And then we're going to gather some other industry relevant, relevant information. And that's what makes the Charlotte Advantage program a little bit different from regular agent source verification. We're going to gather some health protocol, if you've had any kind of vaccination program, if the cattle have been weaned. We're going to gather some additional info like BQA certification, any sort of genetic benchmarks. So when we gather the Charlay specific information, we're going to gather all the bulls registration numbers. We're going to gather something fancy called a genetic merit indicator. Basically, that means that we believe in the TSI numbers so much, we're going to gather all the TSI numbers of the bulls that you use that represent these cattle. We're going to take an average of those TSIs, and we're going to promote that. We're going to gather the seed stock suppliers. One of the things you hear when you talk about talk to order buyers is reputation programs. So if you are a commercial producer that likes to buy from reputation programs, we want to promote that. We want to help that try to get out to the people. And then we're going to gather, like I said, registered, all the AICA registered parents. We're going to gather their genomic status. We're going to gather all the breed specific information we can. So none of this matters if we can't get it out, if nobody sees it. So if you've got cattle enrolled in the program, I'm going to work with the, you've got them on video sale of Superior Livestock, for instance. I'm going to work with the people that are putting the catalog together. We're going to make sure that information gets in the catalog. And then one of the caveats, one of the advantages of the Charlotte Advantage program is we put together a list of, I think, north of 600 cattle feeders, feedlot owners, order buyers, that type of stuff. And we're going to disseminate this information via email to these buyers ahead of the sale. So that's just one of the ways we're going to try to add a little premium to the cattle. So as I wrap up this uh, presentation, all this information can be found at charlayusa.com, all the marketing, all that information. So thanks for coming, guys. We look forward to having you here all day.